Join Kids Hat family. Tia and Tofu are going on a school trip while traveling in the bus. I am so excited, Tia. This is my first school camp. It'll be so much fun. Tofu, I know you are excited, but you should remember what parents told us. We have to be safe and careful throughout. Tia, I am a big boy, and this is my first adventure. I'll be cautious throughout. I promise. I am so happy. We are going together. La 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 la. It's a camp, Tofu, so I don't want you wandering around alone at all. We'll have lots of fun, but we'll stick together and be like a team. Like Batman and Robin, like Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel? I haven't seen that movie. It's not a movie, little one. It's a story of two siblings, just like us. I think this is the best time for me to tell you this story. So sit tight. Hansel and Gretel. Once, a poor woodcutter had a son and a daughter named Hansel and Gretel. One day, they get an evil stepmother. One night, the stepmother tells the woodcutter. The kids eat too much. We'll be starving soon. So let's leave the children in the forest and get rid of them. What are you saying? No. But the wife was very persistent, and she kept talking until he was convinced. Hansel overhears their conversation. So that night, Hansel goes out. And collects shiny white stones. We'll find our way back home. Stop crying, Gretel. Hansel. Tomorrow we are going to die. What do we do? Don't worry, we will survive. Good night, Gretel. Hansel hides the stones and sleeps. The next morning, the stepmother takes the kids to the forest. Hansel keeps dropping stones on the ground, thinking, "We can follow these stones home." Children, wait by this big tree. Just sit quietly here, and I'll be back to get you. But she never comes back to get them. Let's wait for nightfall, Gretel. I dropped a trail of white stones all the way here, so with the moonlight shining on them, we could get back home. I am so scared. <laughs> So at night, Hansel and Gretel follow the shiny stones out of the forest.
The stepmother was secretly angry. A few days later, the stepmother again tricks the children. Let's go have a picnic in the forest. Here, take this bread to eat later. We'll go in the morning. This time, the stepmother locked their room at night and so Hansel couldn't pick up any shiny stones. Next morning, on their way to the forest, Hansel crumbled his bread and left a trail of crumbs instead. Deep in the forest. This looks like a good spot. You both can take a nap here while I go and cut some wood. Hansel and Gretel knew she wouldn't come back again. They slept. and waited for nightfall again. When they woke up, the birds and wild animals had eaten up all the crumbs. Now we will never find our way home. I am so upset for us, Gretel. Hansel, don't lose hope. Let's walk and maybe we find our home. After walking the entire day, they find a small house. Look there! A cookie house! Wow! Oh! The house is made of chocolate with a roof of cake and sugar windows. Come! Come! The hungry children didn't even stop to think. I want a big piece of the cake roof. Yum! Suddenly, they hear a voice. Children, come inside. You seem hungry. I'll make you yummy food right now. The lady was an evil witch. The kids go in the house with her. It's a trap. <laughs> I like to eat kids. I made this house to lure you in. Now I'll fatten the boy up and make a tasty treat for myself. Her eyes were red. She had terrible eyesight, but a good sense of smell. She locks Hansel in a cellar. She makes Gretel do all the housework, all the chores. Hansel and Gretel cried and begged, but she had no mercy on them. Come on, girl. Cook something delicious for your brother. You should be fat enough to be cooked by the end of this month.
A week passed. Hansel ate delicious food. While Gretel was always hungry. Every morning, the old witch went to Hansel's cellar and shouted, Show me your fingers, boy. Let me check how much fatter you've gotten. But Hansel would always stick out a little bone for her to feel because the witch couldn't see very well. She was furious that Hansel was staying so thin. One day, she lost her patience and shouted at Gretel, I don't care anymore. I'll cook thin Hansel today and eat him anyhow. And start the oven. Gretel had no choice and she started doing what the evil witch told her. Now get in and see if the water is boiling enough. How can I get inside the oven? Please show me so that I can check the water. Stupid girl. What is wrong with you? It's so easy. You just need to step here and... Ah! Gretel cleverly pushed the old woman in the oven and shut the door. The vicious witch burned to a crisp. Gretel rushed to the cellar and set Hansel free. Hansel, my dear brother, the witch is dead. Now let's run out of here and find our home. How happy they were. While running out of the house, they saw wooden chests all over in the witch's room. They were filled with gems and gold. The children filled their pockets with as many gems as possible and left the house. Hansel and Gretel walked for a few hours when they got to a bridge that they knew well and was close to their house. Look! Father! Father! Hansel and Gretel could finally see their father at the porch looking miserable because his wife had died. My dearest children, I'm so happy you both are alive. I am sorry for letting you go. The three hugged and precious gems started to fall out of Gretel's pockets. Both the children emptied their pockets in their father's lap. They told their father about the evil witch and how they got her treasure. Oh my God, I am happy my kids came back safe. I will never leave you alone now. Finally, they could have a carefree life and lived together happily ever after. Ooh, witches are scary. We are about to reach the forest camp very soon. Don't leave my hand when we go hiking in the forest. 
I want us to be like Hansel and Gretel. I promise not to go anywhere alone. Does this forest have a cookie house or a witch, Tia? Tofu, it's just a story. Hansel and Gretel shared an adventure like a team. Don't worry about any witch. It's just a camp. I hope we find a cookie house like Hansel and Gretel. Cookie house, yum! That sounds wow! I am hungry now. Give me the chocolates from the bag, Tia, please. Look at that man, Tia. He looks so scary. I wouldn't want to be around him. That is not a nice thing to say, Tofu. Just because he scares you, doesn't mean he's not kind and caring. Let me tell you a story of the beauty and the beast. The Beauty and the Beast Belle lived in a village with her father Morris who was an inventor. One morning, as she was returning from the market, a hunter named Gaston stopped her. Gaston was an arrogant young man. Everybody in the village knew he always got what he wanted. But no one ever dared stand up against him because his father was the village head. The only person who paid no attention to Gaston was Belle. But Gaston was obsessed with her and wanted to marry her. Belle, let me walk you home. Oh, Gaston, N no, thank you. I can go home myself. I insist. I have to talk to your father about something important too. Belle continued walking, ignoring Gaston, who started walking with her. Once home, Belle quickly went inside. Morris, Morris, come out. I have to talk to you. What is it? It is your lucky day. I am going to marry Belle. You have lost your mind. Go away, Gaston. Belle is never going to marry you. Just then, there was a loud explosion in Morris's lab. And he took off towards it. Belle also ran towards her father's lab. Seeing that there was no one he could push around, Gaston left. Right? I have done it, Belle. My experiment was successful. I am leaving for the fair in the nearby village immediately. You will see, my child. People are going to love this. And so Morris leapt on his horse, Philip, and rode off. But as he was crossing the forest, he got lost. After a few hours, Philip and he 
landed in front of a huge lonely castle. There was no one in sight, so Morris tied Philip to a pole at the entrance and went inside the castle. It was pitch dark inside. A few candles were lit in the corners. Hello, is anyone here? I am lost. C can you help me? A large shadow came across the wall. As it came into light, Morris saw that it was not a man, but a huge angry beast with an ugly scar across his face. How dare you enter my castle? You need help? I will help you. I'm sorry. I, I will leave immediately. And Morris started running back the way he had come. But the beast caught him and started dragging him. He took him down the staircase and locked him in the dungeon. Please, please let me go. Please let me go. You will stay here forever. This dungeon is your world now. A whole day had passed and Morris hadn't returned. Belle got worried and decided to go to the nearby village to look for her father. But she too got lost in the forest and landed up at the same castle. Philip was still there, tied to the pole. Belle decided to go inside, just in case her father was there. Hello? Papa? Anybody here? How dare you enter my castle? Get out right away before I lock you in the dungeon too. Suddenly, the beast moved out of the shadows and stood in front of Belle. She was terrified of him, but dared not run. Somewhere from far away, she could hear another voice. It was her father. Please, please let me go. Let me go, please. Open this door. Let me go, please. Do you have my father? Can you please let him go? Hey, what are you saying? I will stay instead of him. Please let him go. Hearing this, the beast took Belle's hand and dragged her up the stairs. He led her into a huge room. So be it. Your father is free and you shall be my prisoner forever. And so it was. No matter how much Morris protested, the beast threw Morris out of the castle and into the forest with Philip. When dinner time came, Belle did not join the beast for dinner. Instead, she stayed in her room crying. The beast entered her room and said, If you are going to stay in this castle, you have to follow its rules. You are expected at dinner. Don't you dare miss it next time. 
You are a monster. You didn't even let me see my father one last time. Go away. I hate you. Seeing Bell heartbroken, the beast felt bad. He pulled out a hand mirror from his coat and gave it to her. In the mirror, she would be able to see whomever she wanted to see at that moment. Belle looked into the mirror and saw her father finally leaving from the castle and riding into the forest. But to her horror, she saw he and Philip had suddenly been attacked by a pack of wolves. She gave out a loud cry and ran downstairs out of the castle gates and towards her father. Soon she found herself and her father Morris surrounded by ferocious wolves. Just as the wolves were about to attack Belle, a large paw grabbed one of them by the neck and threw it away. The wolves now turned on the beast who had decided to follow Belle and help her save her father. The beast scared them off but not before they had bit into his arm and injured Morris too. He put Morris on Philip who took off riding as soon as his master was secure. The beast tried to walk towards the castle but fainted and fell. He woke up two days later to find Belle sitting by his bedside in his room. The wounds on the arm had been bandaged. You... you didn't go? You are awake. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you for saving our lives. Over the next few days, Belle nursed the beast back to health. As they spent time together, Belle realized that he wasn't as mean as he appeared to be the first day they had met. In turn, the beast learned to change his ways and became gentler and kinder. Soon they became very good friends. One day, Belle asked the beast if she could see her father in the mirror. The beast agreed and gave her the mirror. In the mirror, Belle saw all the villagers storming her house. They thought that Morris had gone mad and wanted to send him to the doctor. Nobody believed him when he kept insisting that Belle had been kept as a prisoner by a beast. Worried about her father, Belle requested if she could go to the village for a day just to save her father. And though the beast knew that she might never return, he agreed. Go, but take this mirror with you. In case you ever want to see me. Once Belle reached her house, she stood between her father and the villagers and tried to explain the truth. But the angry mob led by Gaston who wanted revenge from Morris and Belle for turning his wedding proposal down wouldn't listen. Gaston grabbed Belle's hand and tried to get her out of the way. 
as she struggled to free herself, the beast's mirror fell out of her pocket. In it was the beast, looking right at them all. Goodness! She's shown the beast the way to the village. We must go and kill him before he comes here. The angry mob started marching towards the castle with fire torches and swords. They left behind Morris and Belle locked up in their house. Soon they stormed the castle gates. Gaston went upstairs and challenged the beast to a fight. But the beast had had a change of heart. He did not wish to fight. So he came out of the balcony unarmed and tried to talk to the villagers. But Gaston wouldn't have it. He wanted to kill the beast and so he attacked him. His sword pierced through the beast's stomach. Shocked, the beast swung his arm to protect himself. Scared, Gaston stepped backwards and fell off the balcony and died. Somehow, Belle had escaped from her house. and reached the balcony just as the beast fell on the floor. Uh, I, I love you, Belle. I love you too. Please don't go. Suddenly the castle lit up with thousands of candles as Belle still lay crying by the beast. He turned into a handsome young prince. Belle! It's me. You freed me from the witch's spell. To break the spell, I had to love and win the love of another. You loved me even through I was a beast. You saved me, Belle. You saved me. It really is you? As they hugged each other, they saw the rest of the castle and the forest bloom with beautiful trees and flowers. So you see, Tofu, you should never judge people by the way they look. I'm sorry, Tia. I will always remember this now. Tia, I'm getting bored. Will you please stop reading and talk to me? Bored? How can you get bored, Tofu? Why don't you write a story of your own? Uh, I can't think up a story, Tia, especially when I am so bored. Looks like you haven't heard of Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland One sunny day, Alice was sitting next to her sister while she was reading. Her sister had been reading books all morning and Alice was very bored now. She thought for a while and decided to ask her sister to stop reading. She was about to do that when she saw a little white rabbit with pink eyes run past her. I am late! I have to hurry! I am late! Saying so, he ran into his rabbit hole. Alice was suddenly interested in this turn of events and she decided to follow the rabbit. She went to his rabbit hole and peered down it. Uh, 
Suddenly, the hole gave away and Alice fell into it. She kept falling for what seemed like a very long time. Will I ever stop falling? What kind of a strange hole is this? At last, she landed with a thud in a big empty room. The room had three doors of different sizes. She saw the rabbit outside the smallest door before it closed shut. But the door was very tiny. No bigger than Alice's new pencil back home. I must get on the other side of that door. But how will I do that? It is so small. Then Alice noticed a small table in the corner of the room. She went to it to find a small bottle of pink potion with the label Drink Me on it. Next to it was a small little key. The size of the smallest door's lock. I think this key belongs to that door. I wonder what this potion will do to me. Uh, let me try. And so Alice took the key in one hand and drank the potion from the bottle. Suddenly, Alice could no longer see the top of the table. The empty bottle of the pink potion became too heavy for her and fell out of her hand. She was shrinking. What is happening to me? I am shrinking. Once Alice was small enough to go through the smallest door, the shrinking stopped. Alice quickly ran to the door, opened it, and ran out. She found herself in the most beautiful garden she had ever seen. But she could not enjoy it because she was so tiny and all the flowers and plants were so big. I was bigger. Hearing her, the white rabbit came to her and ordered her rather rudely. Go to my house and get my gloves and fan. Alice didn't know why the rabbit was so rude to her. Perhaps he didn't like being followed. Nevertheless, she decided to follow the instructions because she was curious and wanted to see the rabbit's house. When she entered the rabbit's home, she saw a yummy looking cake on the kitchen top. It had a sticker on its plate that said, Eat me! Alice was really hungry by now. She'd even missed lunch, so she decided to eat the cake. As soon as she took one bite, she started growing again. Soon, she would not fit into the house. She could not see the rabbit's gloves anywhere, but grabbed his fan and decided to run out of the house. As soon as she came out, she started shrinking again. Oh no! What is this? Will I ever be back to my normal size again? One of my mushroom makes you grow tall and the other side makes you shrink. Alice turned to see who was talking to her. 
it was a caterpillar sitting on a mushroom. She quickly ate a piece from the side he was pointing and came back to her normal size. She thanked him for his help and asked, How do I get back home? Could you please tell me that? That path leads to the Mad Hatter and the other one to the rabbit's home. This time it was a cat that sat in the tree that spoke. Alice thanked him and took the path to the Mad Hatter. She didn't want to meet the rude rabbit again. I will meet you in the evening at the Queen's Palace. Halt! To go further, you must answer my question correctly. Oh, I love riddles. Please do ask me a question. Tell me, why is a raven like a writing desk? Alice thought for a while, but she did not know the answer to the riddle. I don't know the answer to your question. Could you tell me why? The Mad Hatter was taken aback. Never had anyone asked him the answer to his own riddle. Oh well, I don't know either. We don't know anything here. You can go ahead on the path. Hence Alice proceeded to the Queen's castle where a game of croquet was on. The Queen was very unkind and unreasonable. If she didn't like someone, she would instruct her soldiers to be off with his or her heads immediately. Her guards had made a mistake earlier in the day and so she had turned them into cards for the game. When the queen saw Alice, she instructed her to play with her. You will play croquet with me and if I lose, it will be off with the head for you. Yes, your majesty. Alice was very careful. But the queen was terrible at the game. And Alice had to try really hard to lose. Ha! You lost. If I like, I will have your head for it. A trumpet sounded far off and the white rabbit hopped forward. The royal court is now in session and you will be tried. Tried? For what? I haven't even done anything. You have been accused of stealing heart-shaped tarts from the queen's kitchen. First, you don't know how to play croquet and then you dare steal tarts from my kitchen? You should be punished. Off with her head. This is silly. I haven't even stolen anything. I just reached the castle and started playing with the queen. She looked at the white rabbit, the mad hatter 
the caterpillar and the Cheshire cat. They were all looking at her and smiling. What is going on? Alice felt someone tapping her arm. It was her sister. Wake up Alice. You fell asleep sitting next to me. It's time for lunch. What a strange dream I had. I promise I will never complain of being bored while you read. That is such a strange story, Tia. Next time you sit to read, I too will write my own story instead of getting bored. Okay, but I have to be the first one you tell it to. Okay, Tofu? Yes. What is your project about Tofu? We have to raise money for the class show. We have to make and sell something. So what have you decided to make? That's where the trouble is. I can't think of anything. I wish I had some magic and I could just get as much money as I wanted. In fact, I would use the magic to become the richest person on earth and sit back and relax the whole day. I would do nothing else. Well, Tofu, you do know that there is more in life than only being rich. People like you more when you are honest, hardworking and humble. That's how Aladdin found his princess and lived a happy life. Aladdin? Who is that? I'll tell you. Once upon a time, there was a young boy named Aladdin. He lived with his mother and his pet monkey in a poor village of Arabia. The only relative Aladdin and his mother had was a distant uncle who hardly kept in touch with them. One day, when Aladdin and his mother were finishing the daily chores, Aladdin's uncle showed up. Brother, what a pleasant surprise! How are you, sister? How is your son? We are both good, brother. It has been many years since you have visited us. Aladdin? This is your uncle. You saw him once when you were a little baby. Hello, uncle. Oh, what a young lad he has become. But I'm sorry to see the state of things you have to live in, sister. I have a proposition. Let me take Aladdin with me and I will find him some work. Once he has earned enough, he can come back to you. Till then, keep this piece of gold to make your living. Oh brother, that is a wonderful idea. 
It will do a lot of good to learn some work with you. The next morning, Aladdin and his uncle left. They walked through many villages and towns. Till one day, they came to a quiet place outside one of the villages. There were many caves and tunnels there. What are we doing here, uncle? I have a job for you here. Here, uncle? But there is nothing here except these rocks and caves. Look there, under the tree. There is a large stone with a ring on it. I want you to lift it. Okay, uncle. As you say. Please help me, Uncle. This rock is very heavy. No, I can't help you. It is your job. You have to do it. It's opening. It's opening, Uncle. I can see a narrow passage and some stairs leading further down. Very good job, my boy. Now I want you to go in there. But before you go, here, wear my ring. This is a magical ring. It will keep you safe. Yes, uncle. Aladdin follows his uncle's directions and goes down the stairs. Once at the bottom, he sees that it is a large cave filled with many jewels and gold coins. Pick up the large gold plates and urns. Fill them up with gold and jewels. Pick up anything else that you think may be worth something. Aladdin does as his uncle had told him. He stuffed the large urns with many precious items and made his way back towards the staircase. On his way out, he saw a small dusty lamp. Although it didn't look precious, he decided to take it too and tucked it into his shirt. When Aladdin had reached the top of the staircase, he called out to his uncle for help. Here uncle, please take these hands and then pull me up too. I cannot get out by myself. The opening is too far for me. Yes, yes. Give me the urns. Okay, uncle. Now pull me out. <laughs> pull you out? So that you can go and tell everyone where the treasure is? Ha! <laughs> Never. I brought you along because this is a cursed cave. 
Only a small boy can go in and out of it. I have what I wanted. I don't have to come back for more for a long time. Saying so, Aladdin's uncle shut the cave's opening with a large stone that had a ring on it. Leaving Aladdin behind in the cave. Aladdin was shocked but he stayed patient. Uncle has betrayed us. But I must find a way out and get back to my house. Dear God, show me a way out of here please. Aladdin joined his hands and bowed his head to pray. As he put his hands together, his fingers rubbed over his uncle's magical ring and a creature came out of it. Yes, Master, you called me. Uh, who are you? I am the slave of this ring and whoever wears it. I must obey any one command of the master of the ring and then the ring will be destroyed, freeing me. How may I serve you, my master? Can you please get me out of here and back home to my mother? Yes, master, right away. The next moment, Aladdin was home with his mother. His mother was surprised to see him back home so soon and in such an abrupt manner. My son, you have returned so soon. Where is your uncle? Have you already earned so much money? Uncle cheated on us, mother. I will tell you everything, but first give me something to eat. I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. Aladdin's mother served him the remainder of food as he told her what had happened and how his uncle had tricked and abandoned him. I can't believe my own brother would do this to us, son. I am glad you are home safe now. But the gold coin your uncle gave me has run out and we have nothing to eat now. Don't worry mother, I have this lamp. I will go into the market and sell it tomorrow. Let us sleep for now. Relieved that they were together, Aladdin and his mother slept peacefully that night. The next morning, Aladdin asked his mother for the lamp. Mother, I'm very hungry. Give me the lamp. I will go and sell it so we may have some bread. Here, son, take the lamp. But clean it nicely and polish it before you go to the market. A shiny lamp will fetch you more money. Yes, mother. As Aladdin started dropping the lamp clean with his shirt, a magical creature appeared from it. Yes, Master, what is your command for me? Uh, Master? Are you like the creature of the ring? Yes, Master. He is my brother and I know that he freed you from the caves. What is going on Aladdin? Who is this? Uh, don't worry mother, this is a magical creature of the lamp. He will grant us anything we wish for. 
Call me Genie, my master. Very well, Genie. Please get us something to eat. We are very hungry. As soon as Aladdin had said it, several silver plates appeared with a variety of food in them. The genie went back into the lamp while Aladdin and his mother had a hearty meal. When it was evening, they were hungry again. It's time for dinner. What shall we do? Should I call the genie again? No. Look, he has left us with these silver plates. Go and sell them in the market. We will buy bread after that. Aladdin agreed with his mother and took one of the silver plates to the market. He saw a Turkish trader and decided to strike a deal with him. But Aladdin didn't know the value of his silver tray or how to do business. How much you want for this tray? Please give me whatever you think is fit. I trust you. Okay, take one gold coin. Okay, thank you. The trader was surprised by Aladdin's innocence and was tempted to tell him that he had made a mistake and that the tray was of even lower value than he had coated. But instead, he let him go. Such an innocent boy. He didn't even bother to find out the actual value of the plate. Just trusted me blindly. Perhaps I should have given him the fair value. Haha, <laughs> anyways. With the gold coin he had got, Aladdin bought food and other necessary supplies for his home. But within a few days, they ran out of all the supplies. So Aladdin went back to the Turkish trader and sold him another plate. This time the trader gave him two gold coins. Again Aladdin bought food and supplies for his home. This went on for many days till Aladdin ran out of all the silver plates. Son, there is no food in the house and no plates to sell as well. What shall we do now? I will rub the lamp and call the genie again. Yes, Master, how can I help you today? There is no food in the house. Can you get us some food? Yes, of course, Master. Once again, the genie brought them food on many silver plates. Although Aladdin had the magic lamp, they never used it to satisfy any greed. 
They continued to live frugally, except now his mother started saving a little money from the sale of every silver plate. Like this, in a few years, they had enough money to live a decent life. Aladdin even became a merchant and almost never used the lamp again. One day, he was returning from work. He happened to see the princess as her procession passed from the street. Mother, I am in love with the princess and I have decided to marry her. I will present her with many jewels and precious things that we have collected over the years. Aladdin went to the king and asked for his daughter's hand in marriage. The king saw the honesty in Aladdin's nature and agreed. Aladdin married the princess and showered her with all the riches he had. The news of the happy couple spread across the land till it reached his uncle. So, Aladdin got out and betrayed me, huh? He found a magic lamp and didn't tell me. I shall kill him with my own hands and get the lamp from him. One day, when Aladdin was away at work, his uncle went to his home and stole the magic lamp. He then ordered the genie to transport the whole house into the middle of the desert where no one could find it. What have you done? Where is Aladdin? You will never see him again. Now you are liable to me. You will do as I tell you. Now go and get me some wine and dinner. The princess did as she was told, but as she did so, she planned her escape too. She mixed some sleeping powder in his wine and gave it to him. As soon as he drank it, he fell into a deep sleep. The princess quickly reached for the lamp and dropped it. The genie appeared. Yes, mistress. How may I serve you? Save me, genie. Please find Aladdin and get him here. Yes, mistress. The next moment, Aladdin was there. He saw his uncle sleeping and the genie present. He understood what had happened immediately. He waited till his uncle got up. And then he killed him. He then told the genie to take them back home. The genie did as told. And they continued to live their happy life. Hmm, so he took the hard way. What a good man Aladdin was. 
Yes, he was. Well, I think I do want to be honest and sincere like him. I am never going to look for shortcuts or be lazy again, Tia. I promise. Tia, aren't you going to your friend's party? No, Tofu. Mummy has asked me to stay home with you tonight because she and Papa will be returning home late. Oh no! I'm sorry, Tia. Because of me, you can't go to your party. It's okay, Tofu. Sometimes we have to sacrifice things for the ones we love. Just like the little mermaid. Little mermaid? Is it a story? Tell me, Tia, please. The Little Mermaid Once upon a time, there was a sea kingdom at the bottom of the sea. The king of the seas had six beautiful daughters who were mermaids. They were all very beautiful, but the youngest of them was the prettiest of them all. She had a gentle face, big round eyes and a voice sweeter than anyone else's in the world. When the little mermaid turned 15 years old, her grandmother called her to her room. Come my darling! Today you have turned 15. And from now onwards, you can go to the world above. Just remember, the people above are very different from us. They do not have a beautiful fish tail like us. Instead, they have two legs. Thank you, Grandmother. I have waited for this day for so long. When I return, I will tell you about everything I see above. That night, the little mermaid went to the surface of the water. The sight of the stars and the cool breeze that touched her face took her breath away. She was just getting used to the feeling when she saw a big ship cross in front of her. Aboard it, were many men and they were celebrating the birthday of the young prince who had just turned 16. The little mermaid was mesmerized with the handsome looks of the prince. She couldn't take her eyes off him as the ship sailed past her. She was so lost in him that she did not notice the storm build up in the sky and the sea begin to rage. The ship had only sailed a little further when the storm shook it up. The sailors tried to stir it to safety but many men including the prince fell into the sea. The little mermaid rushed to him and saved him from drowning. She took him ashore. 
Don't worry. You are safe. Open your eyes. But the prince lay unconscious. The mermaid decided to get help. When she couldn't get any, she came back to where the prince was. She saw him surrounded by many people. A beautiful princess was kneeling by him as others worked to awaken him. The prince opened his eyes and the little mermaid was relieved that her prince will be saved now. You saved my life. Thank you. The prince knew nothing about the little mermaid. He didn't even know that it was she who had actually saved his life. This broke the mermaid's heart. She went back to her father's home. She told her sisters and grandmother what had happened. Forget him, child. Humans and we are very different. To be with him forever, you will have to get him to love you more than anything else he loves in the world, even more than his own parents. How will that ever happen? Think about it. But the little mermaid could not forget the handsome prince. Every night she visited the spot where she had laid him after saving his life. One day, she decided to visit the witch in her father's kingdom. Maybe she knew a way that the mermaid could be with the prince. I can send you to the land above the sea. You will lose your fish tail and have legs. If by the second sunset you can get the prince to love you more than he loves his parents, then you can be with him forever. Otherwise, you will die and become foam in the sea. But in return, you must give me your voice. But without my voice, how will I make the prince fall in love with me? You still have your pretty face and eyes. You will also be the most beautiful dancer anyone has ever seen. Now go! In a flash, the mermaid found herself on the land. Her fish tail turned into human legs. It caused her pain, but she could not even scream because the witch had taken her voice away. Somehow, the mermaid made her way to the prince's castle. There was a big celebration going on there. But the guards would not let the mermaid enter because they didn't know who she was and she couldn't answer them when they asked her about it. So she was not allowed to enter. Somewhere in the castle, music started playing. Remembering what the witch had said about dancing, Little Mermaid started dancing. Oh, I have never seen anyone dance so beautifully. Maybe 
She has come to dance for the royal family in the celebrations. Oh, she is a dancer. Let me take her to the court. Once the mermaid reached the royal court, she saw that the celebration was for the wedding of the prince. Little mermaid was heartbroken. She thought the only way of meeting the prince now would be to dance and draw his attention towards her. And so she performed a beautiful dance for the royal family. When the prince saw her, he came up to her. Hello young lady, I have seen you in my dreams. Who are you? In his heart, the prince hoped that she would be the one who had saved him from drowning. He longed to hear the voice that had saved him when he was dying. But no sound came out when the little mermaid tried to reply. Forgive me, I think I am confused between you and someone else. But please do join us. The prince led her to the ship on which the wedding was going to take place. Many people spoke to her but she could not answer anyone. The princess was especially kind to her and took special care of her. I know you saved the prince that day. Thank you, because of you, I have found the love of my life. Please, always stay with us. The little mermaid saw that the princess and the prince loved each other and were very happy together. She decided not to pursue the prince anymore. He belonged to another woman. Although her heart ached to let him go, she happily attended the wedding and all the celebrations that went on throughout the next day. Soon it was evening. The second sunset was about to happen. The little mermaid knew she would die and become foam on the sea. As she stood there, looking at the prince and his princess, she heard some voices behind her. She turned around to see. Her sisters were there in the water. But all of them had very short hair now, instead of the long flowing locks they used to have earlier. Sisters, what are you doing here? We have come to save you. We went to the witch. In exchange of her hair, she gave us this knife. If you stab the prince through his heart before sunset, you can be saved. Handing the knife to the youngest sister, all the other sisters vanished under the water once again. The little mermaid stood there holding the knife to her heart. She looked at the newlyweds once again. She knew what she had to do. At the sunset, she tossed the knife into the sea. 
goodbye, my love. And so, for the happiness of her beloved prince, the little mermaid sacrificed her own life and joined the sea as foam. Tia, this is such a beautiful story. It shows how much the little mermaid loved the prince. Thank you for not going to the party and staying with me. That's because I love you, my little brother. I love you too, my darling sister Tia. You recite so many stories to me that are full of morals. But you have never recited your favorite story to me. Which one is it? <laughs> Tofu, that's true. I haven't yet recited my favorite story to you. Would you want to listen to one of my favorite story? Yeah. Jack and the Beanstalk Once upon a time, there lived a widow with her only son, named Jack. Their times were really hard and they were living in poverty for long. Jack was too young to work and earn money. All their house furniture and other belongings were sold off to carry on with their basic daily needs. Until at last they were left with a cow who used to give milk every day and that they used to sell off in the market to buy bread. One day, the poor old cow didn't give any milk. That's when Jack suggested his mother. I think we should sell off this cow and get a good return in bargain. So Jack left to sell off the cow in the market. On the way, he met a butcher. Oh, where are you going, Jack? I'm going to the market to sell off this cow for a good bargain. Oh, why take the trouble to go that far? I have a very good deal for you. He took out five strange-looking beans from his pocket and handed them to Jack. Jack looked little hazed as to what kind of good bargain it is. Oh my God! They are so beautiful. What do you call these? Beans. Magical beans. If you plant them overnight, by the next morning, they will grow up and reach the sky. Wow! Mother would be so happy to see them. Thank you, Mr. Butcher. And off went Jack happily to his mother and showed her the magical beans. But to his disappointment, she only got angry at him and shouted. Off you go to bed right away. She threw the beans outside the kitchen window and into the backyard and went off to her bed crying and weeping. The next morning, when Jack woke up, he saw outside his window and to his surprise, he saw a great beanstalk reaching up to the sky. Oh my God! This beanstalk is so huge! I need to climb this up to see where it leads to. He climbed up and up and up till his home looked a mere spot on the ground. At last, the stalk ended and Jack found himself in a completely different place. But suddenly, a beautiful lady appeared and said, Hello Jack, you don't know me, but I know you and everything about you. The castle you see there belongs to a giant who stole all your father's money and killed him. Your mother had kept the secret from you to protect you. He owes you, Jack. 
The lady disappeared in thin air. Jack kept standing there and thinking. He surely owes me and my family. Far away, where the road ended, he could see a huge castle. He went up to the castle and knocked on the huge door. A giant woman opened the door. She looked scary and howled at Jack. What do you want? Uh, if you please, ma'am, would you kindly give me some breakfast? I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. The giant woman, though looked cruel and ugly, had a kind heart and offered Jack a huge plate of English breakfast but warned him. You must finish quickly before my giant husband comes back and eats you. Then suddenly there was a huge knock on the door and the wife picked up Jack and hid him in a huge empty kettle. As the door opened, the giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Nonsense! You're mistaken. It's the ox hide you smell. So he sat down at the table and ate the ox that his wife had served him as breakfast. After he finished, he asked his wife, Get me my money bags. He started counting his money, but he was so sleepy that he slept on the table. The whole room was roaring with his snore. Jack, taking an opportunity of this time, got out of the kettle, picked up the money bags and ran towards the door. Before the giant woke up, he climbed down the beanstalk and to his cottage and did not look back even once. He took a sigh of relief and ran to his mother. Mother, look what I got! We are rich now! The mother and the son lived quite comfortably. Till one afternoon, when his mother was away, he decided to go up to the giant's castle and see what was happening there. So he climbed up the beanstalk and reached the castle. There, standing at the door, he saw the giant's wife again. But she didn't recognize him because he was dressed impeccably this time. Uh, if you please, ma'am, he said. Will you give me some breakfast? Run away, you little boy. Last time a boy came, he stole my husband's money bags. But since she was kind-hearted, she offered Jack breakfast. At that very moment, the giant knocked on the door and quickly she hid Jack in the oven. The giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. But the giant's wife once again assured him that he is mistaken and offered him his huge breakfast to eat. After eating his food, he asked his wife, Get me my golden hen. The wife got the hen and the giant roared in his voice. Lay. That very moment, the hen laid a golden egg and Jack was left amazed with what he saw. No sooner he saw the giant slipping into his deep sleep and once again he came out of the oven, picked up the hen and ran for the door. In the meanwhile, the hen began to cackle. 
The voice made the giant move a little, but he kept sleeping. Jack climbed down the stalk and went straight to his mother and gave her the golden hen. The mother and the boy were so rich that they had money greater than even what they could spend. One day he was sitting idle. The thought of the beanstalk crossed his mind again and he decided to climb it. No sooner he was at the castle, but this time he decided not to be seen and climbed the kitchen wall of the castle and hid himself in the oven. In came the giant roaring louder than ever. Fee fee fo fum! I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead. I grind his bones to make my bread. But the giantess was quite sure that she had seen no little boy that morning. And after grumbling a great deal, the giant sat down for breakfast. As soon as he got over with his breakfast, he called out to his wife. Bring me my harp! Sing! ordered the giant. Soon the harp started singing the most beautiful sounds ever heard and no sooner the giant fell off into his deep sleep. Jack, who was waiting for this moment, got out of the oven and climbed the table to grab the harp. But as soon as he started running off with it, the harp started shouting. Master! Master! The giant woke up just in time to catch the sight of Jack running out of the kitchen door. With a fearful roar, he saw Jack running with the harp and dashed after him. Little Jack ran as fast as he could while holding the harp tightly in his hands. The giant, taking terribly long strides, gained on Jack and he would have been caught if giant had not slipped over a boulder. Before he could pick himself up, Jack began to climb down the beanstalk and when the giant arrived at the edge, he was nearly halfway to the cottage. The giant began to climb down too. But as soon as Jack saw him coming, he called out. Mother, bring an axe. The widow hurried out with the chopper. Jack had no sooner reached the ground than he cut the beanstalk right in two. Down came the giant with a terrible crash. And that, you may be sure, was the end of him. But the mother had a very important advice for Jack. Jack, what the giant did to your father was bad. But you should not have been so greedy. He reaped what he sowed. But greed is also a bad deed. Jack agreed to his mother and promised to never be greedy again and they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! That was such an adventurous story! Yeah, Tofu! And do you know why it was my favourite story? No? Tell me! The story was about a brave boy who wanted to fight against poverty and in a way he got a chance to take revenge of his father too. But in the process, he forgot that harming the giant again and again was not ethical and stealing from the giant's house was also against his morals. Oh, that's quite a heavy thought for my little brain. <laughs> Let's go. We are late for dinner. Mom must be waiting. Tia, I think we will take long to reach. Can you please tell me some interesting story? Why not, Tofu? Let me tell you a story 
about a princess and a bad fairy. Sleeping Beauty A long time ago, there lived a king and a queen. They wished for a child for a very long time. After a long, long wait, their wish came true. A beautiful girl was born to the king and queen. The king announced to his people, We are blessed with a baby princess and her name is Sunshine. Hooray! said the people. As the baby girl turned one, celebrations began all around. A big party had to be planned. We must invite all the fairies. Yes, we must call them all. But not the black fairy. She is mean. She is bad. The party was a lot of fun. The baby princess looked lovely. All fairies brought with them some precious gifts and blessed the little princess to be a clever and kind girl. Suddenly, the castle was filled with blue smoke and nobody could see anything. As soon as the blue smoke settled, king and queen were shocked to see the black fairy. She saw that a beautiful celebration was organized and everyone from the kingdom was invited for the feast, including all fairies. She became very angry for not being invited and that's why she cursed the baby princess. On your 16th birthday, before the sun sets, you'll prick on a spindle and die. She screamed in anger and vanished. Everybody was shocked. Suddenly, a young fairy, who had not yet given her blessings to the little princess, said, I can't take away the black fairy's curse, but I'll definitely try to help. When the princess pricks herself, she won't die. Instead, she'll go into a deep sleep and shall only awaken with a kiss from a prince who loves her. After this, the king ordered to destroy all spindles and needles from the kingdom. Soon, there were no sharp things in the castle. Except for one, they didn't check in the tower. As years passed by, the baby grew under supervision of fairies and turned out to be a very beautiful young girl. When she turned 16, 
while roaming in the castle one day she saw a magical light ball and followed the light ball which took her to the top of the tower in the castle inside there was an old woman bent over a spinning wheel come here you must try spinning this wheel oh what is this please let me do it as well I have never tried this. But the minute she touched the needle of the spindle, she fell to the ground. Black Fairy's curse had come true. Old woman, who was actually the Black Fairy, laughed and laughed and then disappeared. The king who remembered the words of the last fairy made her daughter the princess to lie in a room for many years to come. Fairies saw the princess sleeping and everyone thought that she was extremely beautiful. They all said at once Sleeping Beauty Soon this name became popular in town and everyone started to mention princess as the sleeping beauty The whole kingdom was sad Fairies noticed this and decided Let the whole kingdom fall asleep so when the princess wakes up by her prince she wouldn't be alone Everyone in the kingdom fell asleep the king the queen the servants soldiers everyone in town fell asleep Even all the animals fell asleep. Everything in the kingdom stopped. Soon, a thick forest grew around the castle and hid it. About hundreds of years later a handsome prince was riding through the forest. He saw the strange looking castle. The accompanying soldiers told the prince that this is the castle of the sleeping beauty. He had heard stories of sleeping beauty. and started to explore it He was surprised to see everybody in the castle sleeping When he entered more he saw even the king and queen were sleeping He looked around and saw one big pink door He tried to open the door but it was difficult to open as it was closed for so many years After trying hard he managed to open the door and to his surprise he found sleeping beauty lying on a beautiful bed in that room The moment he saw her he just fell in love with her I really want to know Who this beautiful girl is? 
She looks so, so gentle and peaceful, he said. He leaned down and kissed her. Instantly, the kiss lifted the spell and the princess woke up. The king, queen and all the people and animals in the kingdom were awake again. The kingdom was full of joy and there were celebrations all around. The prince and the princess soon got married and lived happily ever after. Wow! It means no matter if bad people think bad for you, there are always some well-wishers to help you out. Yesterday in our class, my friend Ben forgot to bring one of his textbook and Ted offered to share his textbook with him. Ben promised Ted to help him in learning football after school. But after school, when Ted asked Ben to help as promised, instead of helping, Ben left for his home. That's bad. One should always stand by their promises. But Tia, today again Ben forgot his textbook and when he asked Ted to help, Ted refused. Tofu, we should be sensitive towards every human being. You know, we should always help people around. Come, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess in the kingdom of a very humble king. The princess was so pampered by her father that she turned out to be a little proud of the fact that she is a princess. Many a times the king asked her to be more humble towards the people around her because that's the way a princess should be. I know my little princess that you are my pampered child but you should be little more empathetic towards other people. Everybody is same. It's just that some are fortunate, some are not. But the princess just ignored what her father had to say and went out to play with the golden ball that her father had gifted her on her birthday. She loved the ball, but no sooner had she started playing that her ball bounced and went into a pond. Oh God, my favorite golden ball! I would give anything to get back my favorite ball. Anything! Hearing the princess cry out loudly, a frog leaped up and sat on a lotus leaf and said, Princess, I just saw what happened. I will get the golden ball back for you. But you have to promise me something. How in the world did the slimy frog talk? The princess only wanted her ball back, so she hurriedly said yes. What is it that you want in return? I want you to take me back to your palace and pamper me. I would eat with you, play with you and sleep in bed with you. The princess was horrified at the very idea and had no intention of doing any such thing. 
she agreed to the condition as she thought the frog would not be able to reach the palace on his own and she had no intention of taking him along with her she told him to hurry and get the ball back and waited with bated breath for her golden ball the frog jumped into the pond and in no time at all came back with the golden ball she took the ball from him and ran back to her palace as fast as she could princess come back you promised to take me with you you can't break your promise but the princess ignored to his calling and ran as fast as she could she was relieved when she reached her room and soon forgot all about the frog at night while she was having dinner with her father there was a loud knock on the door open the door a princess it's me the frog from the pond you promised to keep me with you being a true princess you should keep up to your promise now who is that and what does he want the princess being a little scared of her father told him about the afternoon incidents and how she broke her promise you are a true princess my love and you should keep up to your promise no matter what feeling helpless the princess opened the door and let the frog enter he hopped on to the seat next to her and asked her to let him eat from her plate the frog ate till his tummy was full but the princess couldn't eat a single bite thinking about the slimy frog eating from her plate then the frog asked her to carry him to her bedroom and let him sleep in her bed unwillingly she picked him up in her hands and went upstairs the frog jumped on her bed and snuggled cozily in her huge soft bed the next morning the princess got up to find the frog missing from her bed happily she hopped from her bed thinking that the ordeal was over but as the night fell the knock again happened and again the frog ate from her plate and slept in her bed feeling sad about sharing her food and bed she went to her father and asked him if she could stop now the king again told her that a promise was a promise and cannot be broken it was the third night when the frog came in again to eat and sleep in her bed but the next morning the princess was astonished to see that the frog was not in her bed 
and a handsome young prince was standing next to her bed. What? Who are you? Where is the slimy frog? Dear princess, it's me, the frog. A witch cast a spell on me that could be broken only if a princess would let me eat in her plate and sleep in her bed for three nights. You broke that spell by keeping your promise and here I am standing in front of you. I am the prince from the neighboring country. Would you like to be my wife? Not able to resist the handsome prince, she said yes, but had something more to say. Oh prince, I would love to be your wife. But how would you forgive me for being so rude to you? She was guilty like hell, but the prince was a humble man. He said, Oh my dear princess, I can understand your reasons and I am ready to forgive you. But you have to promise me that in future you won't judge anybody by the way one looks or the job one does. Everyone is equal and that's how they should be treated, equally. Saying this, the prince took her in his arms and decided to take her to his kingdom where they lived happily ever after. Oh dear, you are right. We should always keep our promises and help people in need. Thanks for the lovely moral story. Come Tofu, let's go and play some games now. John stays with his cousins. Yesterday, he came late to the class and the teacher scolded him a lot. John said his cousin brothers made him finish their course before they let him leave for school. He said they always trouble him and make him do a lot of housework. Oh no! He must feel really bad. John is a very nice boy. He doesn't disobey anyone. He is very nice to his cousin brothers despite the way they treat him. That is very nice of him. We should always forgive people for their mistakes. Have you heard the story of Cinderella? Once upon a time, there lived a young girl called Cinderella. Cinderella's mother had died and so her father had married another woman who had two daughters. One day, Cinderella's father went to work and never returned. Cinderella was left at the mercy of her stepmother and two stepsisters who made her do all the work of the house. Cinderella, it's morning already. Where is our breakfast? Just a moment, stepmother. I am just bringing it out. As soon as Cinderella had laid the breakfast, the stepmother and stepsister started eating it. Cinderella served her own plate too and was about to eat when her stepsister pushed her own plate away. Yuck! I hate it! Yes, now that you mention it, it really is horrible. Mother, do something! Cinderella, are you trying to kill us? What kind of food is this? 
But, but stepmother, I have made it the way I always make it. How dare you argue with me? Go and make new breakfast for us. Don't you dare do anything else till we have had our breakfast. And this is what went on in their house every day. The stepmother and stepsisters troubled Cinderella without any reason. But Cinderella loved them still and never ever complained. One day, an announcement was made in the village. Let everybody know. There will be a royal ball at the palace tomorrow night and the king's son, Prince Charming, will marry a maiden from amongst the guests. Everybody from the village is invited. The whole village was excited. Even Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters couldn't stop talking about it in the house. And that is how Cinderella found out about the ball. The royal ball! Prince Charming! The whole village is invited! I will finish my work quickly so we can all go together. Won't it be just wonderful? You! Who said anything about you going? You will stay here and polish our shoes till you can see your face in them. And so with a heavy heart, Cinderella saw her stepmother and stepsisters dress up and leave for the royal ball the next day. Once they had left, she cried bitterly. Suddenly, her room lit up and Cinderella saw the most beautiful fairy she could imagine. She held in her hand a delicate wand. Who are you? Get up, child. I am your fairy godmother. I am here to get you to the royal ball. Really? I never knew I had a fairy godmother. But how will I get to the ball? I don't have anything to wear. You don't worry about that, my child. And so, in just a few minutes, Cinderella was ready for the royal ball. As she thanked her fairy godmother and got aboard the chariot, she received a word of caution from the fairy godmother. Remember to be back home at 12, otherwise the spell will wear off. Soon Cinderella arrived at the palace. As she entered the great ballroom, everyone turned to look who this beautiful maiden was. Nobody could recognize her. Not even her own stepmother and stepsisters. Prince Charming walked to her. May I have this dance with you? Yes, Your Highness. And so Cinderella 
and Prince Charming danced together throughout the evening. Till Cinderella heard the clock strike. Fairy Godmother's words came back to her. She needed to get out of there before the clock struck 12. Without saying a word, she tore away from the princess's grasp and ran out of the palace. The prince ran after her. Wait, wait! What is wrong? Why are you running? I don't even know your name. But Cinderella dared not wait or even look back. Her beautiful gown was already turning into rags again. Her hair was coming loose from the perfect bun that the fairy godmother had made for her. She didn't even stop when one of the glass slippers came off her foot and fell in the palace driveway. She ran out of the palace gates and vanished into the darkness on a path that led to her home. Once home, she went back to polishing the shoes that had been given to her and decided never to speak to anyone about the ball. A few days later, two men from the palace showed up at their door. The lady that Prince Charming fell in love with left behind her glass slipper at the royal ball. The prince believes that such a beautiful slipper could fit only his beloved. And so we're asking all the girls in the village to try the slipper. The one whom it fits would be the one the prince will marry. If you have any girls in the house, please ask them to try the slipper. Oh, yes, yes. I am sure it was one of my daughters. The slipper would fit one of them. And so both the stepsisters tried to fit their foot into the slipper one by one. They pushed and pushed but couldn't get their foot in. Looks like it wasn't your daughter's after all. Is there any other young lady in the house? No, there isn't. You can leave. As the king's men made ready to leave, suddenly the door of the house was thrown open. And Prince Charming himself stood there. Who is this beautiful girl in the upstairs window? Madam, you have lied to us. I demand that the girl be called forth and try the slipper. Y yes, yes, but she is only a servant girl. Nevertheless, Cinderella, Cinderella, come down here at once. Yes, stepmother. The moment Prince Charming saw Cinderella, he knew he had found his beloved. He took the slipper from the king's man and slipped it on to her foot himself. The slipper fit perfectly in a moment. Cinderella was once again transformed into the beautiful maiden from the night of the ball. Prince Charming took her to the palace with him. He ordered that the stepmother and stepsisters be punished for lying to the king's men and treating Cinderella so badly and rudely. But being the kind-hearted person that she was, Cinderella asked for them to be forgiven. 
the prince fell in love with her even more for her generosity and they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia, how wonderful is it to forgive people? Thank you for telling me this story. I will tell it to John too. I'm sure he will like it. Okay, shall we go home now? I think it's getting late. Did you have a good birthday, Tofu? Yes, very much. And look at all the lovely gifts you've got. Uh, yes. Why? What's wrong? Mm, nothing is wrong, but I just thought Grandmom could have got me a better gift than the single rose flower. Tofu, that's not a nice thing to say. You didn't notice her love for you that made her fly all the way across the country to be with you today. Love? But that's not a gift. Maybe you'll think differently once you hear the story of the Snow Queen. The Snow Queen Once upon a time, in a small village lived two neighbors who were best friends too. Their names were Gerda and Kay. They loved each other a lot. As a symbol of their friendship and love, one day they both planted a rose plant each in their front yards. Every morning, they would get together and water their plants and take care of them. When winters came, Gerda invited Kay. Why don't you come over in the afternoon? My grandma has promised to make us a cup of hot chocolate and tell us a story. Okay Gerda, I will come over after finishing my chores. As promised, Kay went to Gerda's home in the afternoon. Tell us the story of the Snow Queen, Grandmama. Bah! There is no Snow Queen. Do you still believe in such stories? Little did Kay know that the Snow Queen did exist. And she had a magic mirror with which she could look at anybody. And right at that moment, she was looking into Gerda's living room where they sat. Doesn't believe in me, does he? I will send him my ice arrows that will turn him cold. All the love will be gone from his eyes and his heart will freeze over. And the Snow Queen sent her ice arrows towards Kay. As soon as they entered Gerda's home, they went straight for Kay's eyes and heart. Ouch! My eyes! What's happening? They hurt! What is wrong, Kay? Ouch! My heart! It hurts too! Kay, what's wrong? Are you okay? Suddenly, Kay's whole behavior changed towards Gerda. Oh, stop being such a wimp, Gerda. Nothing is wrong. Get away from me. Saying so, he shoved Gerda aside and went home. Over the next few days, he would give cold, mean looks to Gerda 
and would never talk to her nicely. He wouldn't even come to tend to the roses that they had planted. One morning, when Gerda was watering the plants, she saw Kay get into a carriage with a lady who was wearing a white gown. She had skin like diamonds and her hair was silver white. Gerda immediately knew that it was the Snow Queen. She decided to follow her but the carriage just vanished into thin air. So she went to her grandmama. Here, take this hand mirror and follow what it tells you. The mirror only tells you the truth. Gerda took the mirror from her grandma and looked into it. The mirror told her to find the flower garden. So Gerda went looking for it. Meanwhile, once the Snow Queen reached the palace, she told Kay to make it his home from now on. This is your home now. You will never leave here. And once your heart freezes over, you will be mine forever. Back in the village, Gerda found the flower garden and entered it. The garden was full of the most beautiful flowers Gerda had ever seen. She fell in love with them immediately. But there was no smell of the flowers. Surprised, Gerda bent down and touched one of the flowers to understand if they were real. As soon as she touched one flower, the fragrances of all flowers returned and the flower lady appeared in front of her. Thank you! You have returned the fragrance of my flowers. Who are you? I am the owner of this garden. I am the flower lady. Can you help me? Have you seen my friend Kay pass through here? He has been taken by the Snow Queen. Oh no! The Snow Queen! She is one who had taken away the fragrance of my flowers. I did not see Kay cross from here. But you should try the river outside the village. Gerda thanked the flower lady and went to the river. There she saw a boat waiting for her. She climbed into the boat. And it took her to the pirate ship. Aboard the ship, Gerda saw many pirates including a girl pirate. Hello, can you help me? I am looking for my friend Kay. The Snow Queen has taken him. I don't know any Kay. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Because once aboard the pirate ship, you can't go anywhere. You have to be here. No, please, you have to let me go. Kay is my friend. I have to save him. Friend, you say? Heh, <laughs> well... I have never had a friend. Okay, I will help you if you promise to be my friend. Yes, of course. I would love to be your friend. Okay then. Take my reindeer. He is the fastest reindeer in the world. And she knows where the Snow Queen's palace is. Gerda thanked the pirate girl and climbed on the back of the reindeer. Just as the pirate girl had promised, the reindeer had Gerda outside the Snow Queen's palace in no time. 
Gerda got off the reindeer and went inside the palace. Kay? Kay? Are you in here? What are you doing here? I am here to take my friend back with me. <laughs> Your friend doesn't exist anymore. Look at him, standing there in the corner. Just in a few minutes, his heart will freeze over and then he will be mine forever. Gerda turned to see where the Snow Queen had pointed. In the corner stood Kay. His lips were blue and eyes were steely cold. Gerda rushed to him. Kay, it's me, your friend. When Kay didn't reply, she reached out for his hand. His old friend's touch returned the colour in Kay's eyes. Encouraged by this change, Gerda pushed on. Remember all the times we had fun at home? And our roses that we have in the front yard? There is no point in all this. His heart will freeze soon. Hearing this, Gerda broke down and started crying. As she was crying, her tears rolled down from her eyes and on to the hands of Kay. As soon as that happened, Kay looked up at Gerda and smiled. Gerda, my friend, you came for me. This is impossible. Nothing can ever turn my curse over. She tried to pull Gerda away from Kay. And that's when Grandma's mirror fell out of Gerda's pocket. When the Queen looked into it, it spoke to her. Snow Queen, you have been mistaken. There is one power stronger than your curse. And it is the power of love. Hearing this truth, the Snow Queen started crying and soon dissolved in a pool of her own tears. Oh, now I feel so terrible, dear. I think I have not been fair to Grandmom. Well, you still have time to make things better, Tofu. Yeah, you are right, dear. I will go to her and apologize right away. Don't forget to give her a kiss and a big hug. Bye, Melly. I will call you later. Hey, Tofu. How was your day? Oh, it was such a fun day, dear. You know, that new boy who has joined my class, Kate? Yes. The one whom all the teachers like so much? Well, not anymore. They don't. What do you mean, Tofu? Some of us got together and got her into real trouble with the teachers. The teachers think it was all her fault. Tofu, that's horrible. How could you? Relax, Tia. No one will ever know. I am very disappointed with you, Tofu. But you know what? Evil can never win. What are you talking about, Tia? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Once upon a time, there lived a king with his wife. Sadly, they had no children. This made the queen very sad. On a winter day, when it was snowing heavily, 
The queen sat in her garden and prayed with all her heart to have a daughter as beautiful as the winter, fair as snow, and with lips as red as the last red rose that bloomed in the garden. Her prayers were answered a year later when she gave birth to a daughter just as she wanted. But the childbirth was so difficult for the queen that she died during it. Leaving behind the king and their daughter Snow White. As time passed, the princess started asking for her mother. Father, where is mother? Why don't I have a mother? Soon you will have one, my princess. The word spread in the kingdom that the king had decided to remarry. Families who had daughters of marriageable age started trying to impress the king, but no maiden could win his heart. Till one day, an enchanting woman showed up alone at the palace. The king fell in love with her immediately and they were married soon. My queen, this whole palace is yours. It is your own home. Go where you like. Ask for whatever you want. Thank you, kind king. But all I need is a room to store my mirror that I have brought with me. Yes, I noticed that all you have brought is that large round mirror. I am happy as long as you are happy, dear. Oh, you know what will make me truly happy? What is it? Your death! The queen was actually an evil witch who had pretended to be nice so that the king would marry her. Her true motive was to have a kingdom of her own. She had only one other desire to be the fairest woman in the world. Every day, she would stand in front of her mirror, which had magical powers, and ask it the same question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? It is you, O oh Queen. This went on for many years. The queen ruled the kingdom without any real love for its people. The people suffered under her reign, but no one dared say anything because they knew that the queen was a witch. The princess Snow White also had a similar fate. The queen did not even bother to look at her even once and left her alone and lonely. Till it was Snow White's 16th birthday. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Snow White. No! How dare you say that? I do not lie, queen. She must die! She must die! God, come in! One of her most trusted guards came in. Take Snow White and kill her now! But my queen, she is just a child. Do as you are told. Yes, my queen. Afraid of the queen's anger, the guard took Snow White deep into the jungle to kill her.
But as he raised his sword to kill her, he looked into her blue eyes and lost his courage to strike. He just left her there and ran. Lost, Snow White wandered deeper into the jungle. There she came across a tiny cottage. She decided to enter it. Look at this tiny home. I wonder who lives here. She saw seven tiny beds. A dining table with seven small chairs and a kitchen which had seven plates and tumblers. There is seven of everything here. I think seven people live here. But why is everything so small and tiny? Snow White was just looking around when seven dwarfs entered the house. It was their home. Who are you? Oh, hello. I didn't hear you come in. My name is Snow White. I am the princess. The princess? We saw a royal guard kill a roe deer and pull its heart out. Yes, and he was mumbling to himself that he will tell the queen that he had killed the princess and brought her heart for the queen. Yes, the Queen's guard brought me here. I think he wanted to kill me, but ran away, leaving me alone. Don't worry, Princess. You can stay here with us. That way, you will be safe. Oh, thank you so much. Snow White started staying with the Dwarf Brothers. In the day, they would go out into the jungle to hunt and earn money. While Snow White would stay home and cook for them and take care of their house. They all lived happily together. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Snow White. You are lying to me because I didn't visit you since you said this the last time. I cannot lie when you ask me something. But Snow White is dead. Snow White is alive. Your God lied to you. That God will die and so will Snow White. Using her magic, the queen disguised herself as an old woman. She even made the mirror tell her where Snow White lived now. As she entered into the jungle, she saw Snow White filling a jar with water from a stream. I am very thirsty. Please give me some water. Yes, yes. Here, please. Have as much as you want. Thank you, dear girl. Please take this apple as a thank you from me. The apple looked so beautiful and tempting that Snow White just couldn't say no to it. She took it from the old woman but she didn't know that the queen had poisoned the apple. As soon as she took one bite of the apple, the poison affected her. She fell down, stopped breathing 
and had no heartbeat. The queen became very happy and rejoiced as she made her way back to the castle. But she was too distracted by her joy and fell into quicksand. With no one to help, she sank and died. Meanwhile, the dwarfs came home and saw Snow White lying there dead. They were heartbroken. Who did that to her? I think the queen found out about her. Look at that black half-eaten apple. I don't want to let go of her. Let us keep her in a glass box. And so the dwarfs kept her in the glass box in the garden near their home. Every day they would keep a red rose on her box. One day, a young prince came into the forest. There, he saw the seven dwarfs sitting by Snow White. He got down from his horse and went to see. His eyes fell on Snow White, who was in the box. Who is she? What has happened to her? When the dwarfs had finished telling him everything, the prince was sad too. I am in love with her. I wish I had a chance to meet her once. Now all I want to do is kiss her. And so the prince lifted the lid of the glass box and kissed Snow White. As soon as he kissed her, Snow White opened her eyes. The curse of the poisoned apple had been broken. My princess, you are alive. Your love woke me up, dear prince. Encouraged by the prince's support, Snow White decided to go back to her kingdom and face the queen. When she reached there, she found out that the queen was dead and the kingdom was joyous to have the princess back. Snow White took over the throne with the prince by her side and even invited the dwarfs to come in the castle and stay with them. With her return, the kingdom was joyous once again. Tia, can you please take me to Kate's house? I have to apologize to her right away. I think I have been evil to her. Good decision, Tofu. Yes, I will take you there. Come on, let's go. Thanks, Tia. And I promise, tomorrow I will tell the teachers the truth too. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.